Good morning. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call on Wednesday, June 3rd. And my name is Trisha Gordon. I am at the University of Virginia and I'm your facilitator today, along with Charles Bristow um, and Wilma. I have pasted the link to the Etherpad in the chat. If you can take a moment to go ahead and sign in, that'd be great. And it looks like, Wilma, thank you. You already posted some announcements there on Etherpad. Do you want to walk us through those? Sure. Um, just another reminder about Open Aperio coming up in just a little less than two weeks. So the early bird pricing um, ended already, but registration is still open. And it's quite reasonable. I think the regular um, non-early bird price is only like $59. So mm -hmm. um, if you're interested in registering, I encourage you to, to get those um, registrations in soon. And there is financial assistance available if uh, if you have zero travel budget, but you still want to go, you can um, fill out a form to ask for uh, financial assistance. So um, right. so that's available as well. What, um, how long uh, will you, will you um, be accepting registrations right up until um, the conference or? Yeah, probably up until I would say the day before. I don't know exactly when the cutoff is, oh, okay. um, but we need to enroll people. So um, at the very latest, we would need to enroll them like the day of. So we'd need okay. to have everyone registered by the day before. Right. Gotcha. But yeah. Um, yeah, it should be a good program. It's going to um, span the week, but it's sort of, um, centralized around that 10 to 2 time frame for the majority of the sessions just to make it a little more time zone friendly to people both in Europe and on the West Coast here in the U.S. So, um, Oh, that's great. Yep. Smart. Um, and uh, another announcement is um, we're still doing some UI focus groups. We've got two more opportunities to sign up for those on Friday, June 12th and June 26th. Um, there's some instructor um, focus group openings those days at 10 a.m. And then also we have some students um, coming in at 11 and we actually we have a few students signed up for both of those but there's still a few spots available um, so if there are any students around that you would like to encourage to sign up to share their opinion we're going to be looking at some different things than we've looked at before so if you happen to sit in on one of the earlier ones um, we're going to be looking at different stuff so uh, we'll be diving into other areas we were working uh, primarily on global nav and dashboard up until now, but um, we're going to shift gears a little bit and look a little more at like the table view and some of the the widgets and um, a few more things that uh, we've not gotten a lot of feedback on yet. Great. So those links to sign up right now. <laughs> those <laughs> links to sign up are in the Etherpad if you're interested. Thanks, Wilma. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I need to stop signing up because I need to get back to doing my job here. Uh, so, gosh, we have a ton of JIRAs in this list. And um, Tricia, <laughs> before we move on to the JIRAs, can I, I wanted to ask just a quick question. Um, if we knew or if we had any timeline for um, 20.1 to be released? Um, I think the target is after Open Imperial, so end of June okay. is the target. Um, it could you know, go maybe a slightly later than that, but um, but we're targeting end of June. Thank you. Oh, great. Okay, are we ready to move on, Charles? Yes. All Sorry. Right. No, no problem at all. I guess I will we'll try to share um, the JIRA. So the first one we have is, uh, hold on, let me paste the URL into the chat for you guys. And I'm not sure who posted the, oops, wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> that was my... Uh, That was my title to the focus group. 
There we go. So SAC 43155 is a work log tab in assignments. This is a feature request. And it was reported by Jorge Canovas, I'm not sure, uh, University of Murcia. And what do they want? Considers the development of a tool that allows students to keep track of the time spent on the tasks that teachers create in Sakai. Interesting. One of the main issues that university degree programs are facing nowadays is adjusting the workload that students must devote to a subject according to the different formative activities. Um, there are no comments. This is a waiting review. So it's not even open yet. Um, any feedback on this? Well, we know the information is probably out there. We certainly have it with tests and quizzes where instructors can see how long it took students to do a task. So I can see how this could be valuable for them. Yeah, and it's already got uh, somebody assigned to do the work, Eduardo. Um, so I, I'm guessing that, um, you know, I don't know that any of us have any real input yet, but other than sounds like a good idea. <laughs> um, Could what, also, guess, what number are we doing? This is uh, 43155, Laura. 43155, which has nothing there. Is that right? Uh, there's no dis. Ah, there's the description. It appeared um, uh, collapsed for me. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, you know, since it's not even open yet, I think it's just, you know, I'm even reluctant to say we reviewed it but I can mark it as reviewed. Uh, I think it would be helpful if we are able to ask questions and um, request to be in the loop without marking it as reviewed because there's really not much to go on here except that perhaps they'd like some help um, designing it. Yeah. Where would, like, where would you put it? Yeah. In the Maybe. assignment tool is yeah. what they're suggesting. I'm kind of wondering if it's like a timer that they sort of turn on and off when they're working on that task, or if it's something where it's just going to add up the time from when they click to open it the first time, which is kind of like text tests and quizzes. Well, here it says they want a, a work log tab in which students can add the time they're spending on it. So it would just log their. Be, you know, like begin assessment and then submit for grading, like that point that you get in tests and quizzes. There, there's, I'm sure, no. a light, right? A similar timeline on assignments that you can find from quick data. No, I don't think that's what they're thinking. Yeah. I think they're thinking like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go into this assignment. Okay, I just spent an hour on this assignment. I'm going to put in, okay, I spent an hour. Yeah. And then I come back later and, okay, I spent another 30 minutes. I add that in and it eventually mm -hmm. it totals up all the ah, time okay. that I say yeah. I have spent on this particular thing. Yeah, because if you just said from the first time you opened it to the time you submitted it, that says nothing really doesn't yeah yeah because if it, you start it one day and you spend an hour on it sure. and you come back the next day it's been open <laughs> you know for 20 for or more hours, hours. Yeah. if you're if you're being honest yeah sure yeah if i could say i spent three hours on the thing and maybe i didn't <laughs> well <laughs> yeah you could um and i guess this is intended to help um the administration in universities, not necessarily the students themselves. 
Well, also the course instructors have no idea how long students spend on their tasks they're given. Um, that yeah. is, that's we been a real problem. Yeah. It's an interesting thought. I don't, the more I think of it right now, the more I don't think it needs to be something that necessarily has to be in Sakai. Because <clears throat> Sakai doesn't have any opinion on it. You know, it's not adding anything to it. Mm -hmm. it, can't, it can't say whether the information's true or false. It's just a, it's just a tab to, it's just a tab to in, in input information from the student's point of view. So I don't know. And it's interesting to me that it, if it's tied to assignments, well, it doesn't capture anything else about any other work in other tools. So um, it's, it's limited in its value for that reason. Maybe it's a new tool itself. Maybe it's uh, I guess these are good questions we should ask him. Yeah. I'm, I'm on it. All right, <laughs> Laura. Do you I want to actually capture re -reading all work it, or only assignment work? Actually, rereading it does sound like it would be a new. Well, it almost talks about two different things. It says development of a tool <clears throat> that allows students to keep track of the time spent on the tasks that teachers create. But then under context, it seems to focus only on assignments. So mm -hmm. it's not clear what the scope of this is supposed to be. Right. Yeah. It sounds like a component, a like, a, like a rubrics or something that you'll do. I, I put a link to a, how JIRA does time tracking. And this is kind of like self-reporting for, you know, for people who work yeah. on issues. And, exactly. That's great. That's great. And it's just that the more that, you know, if people are going to save, they're going to overestimate, underestimate. But, you know, you should get if a enough people do it, you should get a good idea of how long it took. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my other question is, <clears throat> what incentive does, do students have to voluntarily take a minute to do this? I can see most of them forgetting or just not doing it. Um, if there's no gain, and you know nothing that incentivizes it for them. So if it's just a standalone tool, am I as a student going to you know after I've spent hours on this homework, I might remember to go to that tool and enter how much time that took or just do it on a sort of general this week I spent so many hours on this class but well um, maybe it could be an option where like the instructor has the when the instructor sets up the assignment they can choose to make it required that the student enter their time so maybe they can't submit before they put in a time estimate uh, that's, that, that would that would definitely that would force cover that to do that situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of good ideas. I think Laura Geckler, you're capturing this. I am. I'm writing. I'm writing all Thank kinds of brilliant so things based on what you're <laughs> saying. Here's some of them. I haven't. Um, I haven't hit send for the the oh, okay. uh, comment yet. So this is what I've got right now. Does this make sense? Trying to synthesize what you're all saying. Did we say that it should be an LTI? I don't. Well, we thought it should maybe be an independent tool, and that made me think of LTI. And why create something that exists somewhere before? There's a lot of task timers where people self-enter their tasks. Yeah. So maybe could be an LTI, not should be an LTI. Okay, I will yeah. change that. Could be, although I'm in the should be camp but i shall amend <laughs> uh, put in a note about if, if if it's something that would be required or not if they were thinking of doing that or if it's an right. optional thing um yeah at the bottom i said something like what incentive do students have for recording their time is it a gradable activity um or like you're saying um do we make it mandatory, right, or a prerequisite? Yeah. 
but that's only going to work for things where they're actually submitting things. If it's stuff where, okay, how much time did you spend on lessons pages? There's no way to incentivize that, <clears throat> entering information about that. So, eh. mm -hmm. I think it has to be gradable in order to, okay, I changed should yeah. to could. Could I think, options for those it, I, things, I think it can be there without being, or you know, instructors can enable options, is what I would like to see to make it required or um, gradable. Yeah, but they could be optional, but right. there should be an option to make it right. Well, I think we have reviewed it, so I'm going to change the, um, <laughs> I mean, we want, we want to review it again, I'm guessing, once it gets a little further down the road. So maybe we'll just leave it the way it is. Yeah, but once we cranked our minds into it, all kinds of ideas came to us. No kidding. Yeah. All so right. Should I, should I label it reviewed or leave it? No, I like that idea, Trish. I, I think yeah. we're, with, we're behind you. It, it, in, in which way? <laughs> maybe put in another maybe when, and, when you add the com or we could add another comment that says um, discussed in T and L would like to discuss again when more information is available or mockups or, yeah, or well, some such not, yes. language yeah <laughs> I'm just going to leave both labels there so it'll pop up again if we just search for TL tags okay um, yeah, my last statement here is we'd like to see UI mock-ups when you're at that stage. Oh, so it does. Okay. Yes. Nobody reads anymore. <laughs> <laughs> As if they ever did. Yeah. It took me 30 seconds to read that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Make sure you log that one. one. Oh, that's hilarious. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That was good. Okay. Uh, are we ready to move on to the next one? Why I not? think so. All right. I'm going to paste it into the chat. This is SAC 43139. Several grading books per subject. Ooh, oh, I guess several grade books. Yes. There are subjects in which students are offered the possibility of taking advantage of several qualification method, methods. Grading tool only allows one configuration record per subject. In order to make the tool handle that scenario, it should be modified so several grading books could be created within a subject, I guess, course site. I personally hate this idea, but um, right off the bat, but there could be, you know, there's not much here to go on. I don't um, think it translates well. Yeah. Yeah. I think it can be technically very difficult. Yeah, and then how do you integrate that with your sis? I mean, maybe that's not an issue at all schools, but it would be at ours. Yep. You know. Let's try to imagine other ways of interpreting this. Okay. Well, what is the qualification method? Are I, they talking I think, about like percentages versus points, or are they talking like maybe the letter grade grades scale? versus pass fail, or different yeah. grade scales? Yeah. <laughs> Several oh. one subject where you do several. Maybe like some people have a pass fail, but other people have, you know, mm -hmm. A, B, C, D. And we actually accommodate that at UVA. We've, we've, you know, enhanced it so we could. So, you know, some students have chosen um, a letter grade and some have chosen pass fail. Both can show up on a per student, not for each student, but on a per student basis, you know, one has this, one has the other, no problem. But, yeah. the, you know, the calculation translates that on whatever scale is in, in play for a given student. I'm trying, 
What, I'm trying we, to interpret this JIRA as to, in, in terms of qualification methods, whether or not they're talking about different pathways. So for instance, there are four different assignments and the uh, student might pick two in order to satisfy the requirements for this module of the course. And I'm wondering whether or not this is just subject to interpretation for creating categories and dropping the lowest N within that category. I don't think we have any way of knowing what what they really want here because it's just not clear to me. I seem to remember with Gradebook 2 that there was at one point in time consideration of multiple gradebooks per course. And obviously gradebook two is dead meat on a dull stick. I just don't and but I'm sensitive to Wilma's concerns that this might be difficult to implement if we are talking about multiple different grade books for a course. Do we simply need to request more clarification regarding Yeah, I think we should add a comment asking, you know, are they talking about different grade books per course? Or are they talking about maybe different grade scales within a course or, um, you know, some right. other? Right. It needs a more concrete example of what they. Yeah, maybe. Are. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I'm telling them all the ways we imagine this might mean. <laughs> so that will let them we're, know. We're a creative group. <laughs> we are. We'll spend some time guessing. But, well, yeah. if you've ever tried to learn another language, you, you get out there and you're speaking in the other language and you realize you're missing some serious vocabulary items. And so you try yeah. and talk your way around it, yes. right? Yes, in and the so, best way you can. That's, that's in the best correct. way you can. That's what you do. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I'm trying to explain to them how many different ways we could talk about <laughs> so I've got the scenario was one interpretation we imagined was one student is graded pass fail while the other receives A, B, or C, mm -hmm. receives A, B, or C for the same assignment, uh, for the same assignment, grade column. Another interpretation was to support different paths through the course where an instructor may give, give students the option of completing two out of five choices and wants the choices to appear in the same grade columns, the same two, in the same two grade columns. Any other imaginary items here? We'd, we'd appreciate an example of what you yes. mean. Yeah. I think that's and, good. Well, yeah. and also if, if they're talking about different complete grade books per different instances of the oh, grade Oh, right. Book. They could mean that too. Which is okay. what it sounds like, but yeah. That could be just the language barrier right there. All right. Thanks for capturing that, Laura. You're welcome. Do we think we're ready to move on? It always surprises me. We, you know, going through these JIRAs is very time consuming as anybody who's done um, JIRA triage knows. <laughs> here, here. All right, so I'm gonna paste in the next URL, um, SAC 43037. This is about items assigned to group should only appear to group members Oh, in the grade book. So this is grade book related. Um, it is open, but not assigned. So a couple of versions of this of this ask out there, because I think there was even one three years ago when we were upgrading to Gradebook NG about, I mean, this is, this is just a huge thing we've been asking for for a long time. <laughs> You're not part of a, of a group assigned to a thing. It shouldn't show up in the Gradebook for everybody else. You know? Right. Yeah. That's, that's right. It's confusing for them and makes them worry. 
Uh, and then Tiffany, uh, Daniel posted a, a Tiffany response. Also makes me think of another related issue when different groups are in the same site and are assigned specific assignments or tests. And then a student switches groups. Oh, that's terrible. The student's grade from a submitted assignment or assessment may still be impacting the student's course grade, but it is not visible in the grade book. To either one of them. <laughs> oh, that is terrible. This has yeah. been pretty icky. Sorry, I just joined late. Oh, hi, Tiffany. <laughs> Perfect timing, Tiffany. We're quoting you. Were your ears ringing? <laughs> you may not change groups. That's just the rule. Sorry. I, don't you wish it was? It creates so many problems. Um, yeah, I mean, the problem here is that you don't have control over the changing of groups because it's an enrollment issue. So if you've released something to a roster, um, the student information system in many cases is controlling that group membership. And mm -hmm. um, and so the student is is moved forcibly, whether or not the instructor would move them. But instructors also sometimes like to move students around to different groups, which is not great either. That's right. <laughs> um, so anyway, I agree that the um, items should show up just to the group members in Gradebook. Well, I think this is also related to the difference in the way the assignment tool interacts with the Gradebook in that it's different whether you have the assignment tool create the item or whether you associate with an already existing item. And do you think the behavior? Well, I don't I don't think this is specific to assignments though. It's for any group it, aware right. item. Yeah. Well, except he talks to linking it to an existing gradebook item. Um, that yeah, I you think can that's pretty much only thing assignments. Or forms, oh. but yeah, forms I, is I weird think. anyway. I think tests, uh, tests and quizzes were added to the ability to link uh, more recently, weren't they? In no, you were just now. no. They ju they just allowed it an option to choose a category. Oh, okay, that's good. That's better. I just saw that. But it does sound like just from the description that if a group aware item is coming from a different source tool or gets linked to an existing item, then this group issue comes into play. Yeah, I mean, or looking at it- visibility issue. Looking at it in like earlier versions of Sakai, uh, I don't know which, I guess this appears in 19, um, you do have the group aware items in the gradebook only showing up to the appropriate groups. If, so if it's good. just to the gradebook alone, got the, it. Yeah, if it's just in the grade. Well, no, I mean, in tests and quizzes too, tests and quizzes that are released to groups don't show up in the gradebook for non-group members. In earlier versions? Of I think I think in somewhere in 11 or 12. So. It's always done that for us. Hmm. In gradebook NG, it's, Charles, don't you see the same? We see people in other groups seeing those grade items in the grade book, whether they're in the group or not. Oh, oh they do. They are seeing them? I, I thought they did. Have yeah. But yeah. I'm not sure. This is icky because if a student is looking at the grade book you, and you had a particular grade item, the grade item would then need to go back to the initial tool in order to determine group assignment. Mm -hmm. And then that code would vary based on each backend tool that it would need to dereference. Um, we already have a mechanism whereby instructors can choose whether or not to release a grade item to students. Could that be modified? And, and this would be a poor instructor experience, but could that be modified to provide a checklist of the groups that exist within the uh, overall course so that the instructor would have the power of choosing which groups a particular grade item should be released to? So instead of having it go back to the native tool, which is the source of the grade, put an overarching control on each grade item to specify whether the instructor should release it to different groups of users or not. 
No, I, I think that's bad. Uh, the instructor shouldn't have to control that in two places. Uh, as soon as a test is released to a group, it should only show up for the group. And I could swear, you know, I'll test again, but I could swear in Sakai 11 or whatever, you know, 11 to 12 ish that we have at UVA that uh, if a student is does not have a test released to them, they don't see it in the gradebook either. Um, are, and the same are you still using primary. classic? We also classic. have classic. We have both, both okay. classic okay. and and NG. Um, and it may be that classic is controlling that it somewhere yeah. that that NG is not. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. that, that's entirely possible. We had that ability when we had Gradebook Two. If we had them both set up in the course, there were things Gradebook Two could do that the new Gradebook couldn't. So mm -hmm. if we did the math in in Gradebook Two but hit it. And the results of that math would show up in the new gradebook. So that could be what's happening is that your classic is controlling. Yeah, we'll have to look at this a little. Yeah. Deeper. An interest. Yes. Good point, Laura. Okay. OK, I did not keep track of whether we came up with a solution for this because I was editing the description. So if you refresh your, your <laughs> link, um, you'll see that I just clarified that the current behavior is adding it does one thing and linking it does another. Um, and then their finals um, is a more consistent view is desirable. In your conversation, did anybody come up with a new way to do this? Uh, it sounded like Adam was doing a lot of talking, so he, maybe Adam <laughs> is the one. He had, should, a um, he had a suggested way of doing it. Did everybody like it? No. No. <laughs> no. Nobody likes what I say. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although, actually, Adam, that that might be a useful feature within the gradebook if you create an item just in the gradebook to be able to release it just to a group. That's true. I agree yeah, with that. Yeah, I, I thought it had some merit, but... Um, uh, so but we don't think, totally think, dislike it. That's right. We don't totally disagree that that Yay. is part. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we could be... I do agree with Tiffany that uh, having instructors manage that in more than one place is less desirable. Yeah, I think really what we need is better group handling in the back end in general. All together. Um, all together. Yeah. So that yeah. when users are moved out of a group, that has been assigned to complete something that they have uh, completed, it is still associated with that user appropriately, and they can still see their grades, they can still see their comments, et cetera, and, and it's still affecting their course grade because they've taken it, they've submitted it, um, even if they're not still in that group. And uh, tests and quizzes, in fact, does retain um, nicely the fact that the student has taken it, they just don't make it visible to the student anymore. Um, it's still there, uh, present in the back end. It's just not um, apparent in an easy to find way. Uh, it is apparent to the instructor if they use the view all menu in the in the score screen and tests to see that. Well, let's start with the front end though. In the front end, I have always been confused about what the difference in behavior is in adding versus linking. I mean, this yeah, is, I don't. I don't think there should be two different ways. But that's I, I don't either. Agreed. I don't either. Totally different Jira, but yeah, and there needs to just be mm -hmm. one way, and it should work for all the items the that's same that's way. Right. Well, that's isn't the, that's that, the problem isn't here? Isn't that what the, they're asking for? Isn't that what they're yeah. asking for here, Wilma? Uh, I don't know if the centralized gradebook would fix this necessarily, because it's also about group management. It's it's really about it's more about groups. We better put another component on it then too. Yeah, we have a component the, for groups. Uh, assignment versus linking, and and like we we talked about trying to fix this in the past too, and it was just I think we gave a long site when I was still working there. We gave a quote to one of our clients, and it was they they declined it because it was like something like a hundred hours to fix this problem. I'm sure it's not going to be trivial. But I wanted to do it. I was all ready to do it. We had this huge Darn design it. document to do it, but it's wow. It's it to fix this. You no, know, the problem is that if you link it, 
the grade book does check if it's externally maintained, if you have group access, all this other stuff. But if you actually create it and then you and then you add it and then you, you link it afterward, then it, it doesn't do the same check. So there's a lot of oh. and how each tool does it is different. Maybe mm -hmm. the maybe I haven't followed what Adrian's doing with the centralized grade book or what, what Longsight's doing with that, but that may fix these things and that would be cool. But uh, that's the central problem here. Yeah. Okay, so if I write up a comment about our review, we have agreement that there should only be one way to do this. Is that right? One way to make a gradebook item linked well, to. Well, that's a different JIRA. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah. Totally this JIRA is more idea. about like what students can see in the gradebook. And I think we all agree that students should only see the items that are there are assigned to them. That's right. They should only see the assignments that are assigned to them or any items for which they have a grade. Yeah. That's right. Correct. If they've if they've been graded for it, if they submitted it, even if they've been removed from the group subsequent to that, they should still see it. Yes. Or submission, DD adds submission even if it hasn't been graded yet. Right, exactly. If they yes. have a submission, they should, yeah. That shouldn't just disappear. Yeah, I mean, like I said, in tests and quizzes, the submission doesn't disappear. It just doesn't let them see the feedback it's and stuff. Just hidden. Yeah, it's kind of hidden. <clears throat> Laura Geckler, um, did that help you? Yes, it did okay. immensely. Thank you so much for capturing our thoughts because I know it's difficult when we're all talking. <laughs> oh, it's a challenge I'm up for. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. I think we're ready to move on to the next era. It's SAC 42297 um, about moving role descriptions to the top of managed participants. And Adam, you created this. Maybe you'd like to um, walk us through the idea here. So in our instance, we have system managed roles and non-system managed roles and descriptions of those roles as appropriate. Um, the only issue here is that if you have a long list of participants and you are trying to add a new one, you don't see the role descriptions at the bottom of the screen. So instead of listing them at the bottom, list them at the top. So that way instructors are re-familiarized regarding what roles exist within the site and their respective rights. Have the, um, has the information about this been removed from the ad participants process? Because it should appear on the page when you select which role you're assigning to the new participant. Take a look now because this Jira precedes the ad participants. I don't think role descriptions are ever displayed on the ad That's participant process. I, I, they were. I, th I thought they were. Yeah, they yeah. are. On the page although, where you select the role. Yeah, yeah, although if you're just switching somebody into a different mm -hmm. role, it no, doesn't they don't. show up until the bottom. What what version are you looking in there, Charles? Nineteen three. Um, Charles, you may be looking at a project site that doesn't have description for roles. When you choose a nope. role for a participant, the role the role description does appear in the table to the right. Mm-hmm. It should. Hmm. Ours don't. Oh, interesting. But also, you know, this JIRA was initially filed for managed participants. Again, the role descriptions are at the bottom of managed participants. So if you wanted to click on the role drop down, again, in a long list, you would not see the role descriptions. Yeah, if you're just changing someone's role, they're already If you're in changing the someone's role. Yeah. Right. I have to say, though, I can see some people being very frustrated that now the list of participants has been pushed down lower. Yeah. 
especially in the school has a lot of a lot of roles because sometimes you don't have just the three i've seen 10 roles 15 roles yeah depending know. yeah mm -hmm. nine for nine for notre dame nine wow we're getting what up about here so it's it's more of a UX thing. Like where are the, where is this going to go? Like is maybe this could go in a collapsible div or or something off to the side. Oh, yeah. or something that what, you know, something that is on the top but isn't always you know pushing everything down too. What about yeah. something to the right, like a new table column maybe that's like an info column for the roles? Um, or maybe where you just would, like a little would question mark click in on, your role. Like the word yeah. a little icon next to it, and then you can exactly view that's nice. yeah. modal. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Like roll info or something. Um, so that, I mean, the problem again is if you've scrolled down, right, then um, you won't see the, the roll header of the table. Um, unless we fix that table uh, functionality, it would be nice, in fact, if the table header stayed, uh, you know, static and the role scrolled mm -hmm. if you have a huge list of participants. Yeah. Um, but, of course, that would be an entirely different table management and, and structure. Um, I don't know about accessibility of that either. But, um, yeah, something like to, right to the right of the drop down where you select that role, a little little icon or like role yeah, info like an, uh, link. Uh, an eye for information yeah. and right. you click on that and it pops up the list of all the descript uh roles and their descriptions exactly but to the right yeah. of the um the role drop down menu yeah. for each each um cell yeah and then that would have to have some kind of uh you know alt text like like role descriptions or something Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I like that idea personally. Does that appeal to you, Adam? I think it sounds fine. Is anybody capturing that? I wasn't. I fell apart. Oh, that's okay. Maybe, Tiffany, you could do that because you described it very well. Sure. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Nothing to see here. Moving on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, okay. I didn't get that one. Sorry. That's okay. No worries. You're doing a great job. Okay, one more. At least one more. So we've got SAC 40105. And this is a feature request to um, give students the ability to download all of their work for their personal archive. Oh, I do like this idea. Yeah, we've had requests for this before. And other people. It's really, yeah, because you know, hmm, gosh. They've... That's huge. You guys get requests for this kind of thing from your students? Well, the thing is, um, we try to discourage students from writing their magnum opus in line. <laughs> they should have a copy of it already. I don't know. They don't. <clears throat> well, I mean, doing that in forums or something, you can't export it as easily, right? Students don't currently have the um, the UI. I mean, I have already a JIRA for that. The UI to get to their own, um, uh, you know, forum posts quickly that kind of thing. Um, it would be cool if they could just export all of that stuff. Uh, for example, lessons, if they could do like a, a cartridge export of all their student created lesson pages um, or, uh, you know, there are other tools, but just thinking of things that are created in line, um, forums and, uh, and lesson, student lesson pages would be the big ones. You know, uh, it occurs, you know, I'm just sort of thinking out loud here. Um, I was just thinking that the search tool, which searches across all sites, if it could search for um, content by a user, so, you know, it returns and then gives you um, a button to download all of the search results. Um, well, the, 
the problem is we don't have permissioning in place. Search doesn't have any kind of permissioning to look for content in any tool like assignments or quizzes uh, for submission content. That's so true. search would have to be completely refactored, I think, for it to be able to account for all of these extremely complex permissions um, for searching for things. The well, other thing is... Either that, way, whatever tool is developed around this would have to do that too. Yeah, but it it might be more possible, I'm thinking, to to do something like this on a per tool basis rather than on a, a global all sites basis well, uh, I, because each tool has its own permissions and the permissions are site specific. Yeah, uh, but I don't think students are gonna want to have to go into each tool and yeah. into each site, into each tool. One to button to rule them all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get that. Well, that's what this feature request is asking for. They want one button to download everything. And I right. think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Canvas has something like this, which is, I'm guessing, where this mm -hmm. idea came from. Well, I'll speak to how my institution might look to use this. We frequently have requests from either current students who can't access submitted work for unpublished sites or from graduated students who've lost access to a paper. To Laura's point, they should already have a copy, but hard drives die and people are disorganized. So they know they submitted it to Sakai and they just want to get back their own intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Um, and to Tiffany's point regarding uh, forums or lessons in the export that would be required might be tool specific. For my institution, people are really interested in just getting to the papers that they did in the past. Right. So and, I, and could see, yeah. I could see a great appeal to a graduating senior that we tell them before graduation hey, if you want a copy of your materials before you leave, click this button and you'll get an archive. Right. I doubt very many students are going to care about some response they put in a forum as much well, as a paper that they submitted. What about like a, a section in your, in your home site uh, that would do this? I, I really don't feel like search is the right place for it. Um, but something like, uh, you know, export all my assignments, export all my forum posts, export all my yada, 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 um, or a page that sends you to a global print view of all your forum posts, if you wanted that, or, you know, oh, all of your lessons or something like that. I don't like see that. that being any better than going tool by tool, uh, really. Per and you might I mean, want it, it be per a, course, right? You don't want it tool by tool. You want it per course. Right. Maybe, and the, maybe we could just limit to content, you know, whatever has been uploaded to content for that person, by that person is stuff they can get out. And content could be any attachment to any tool. Um or an upload to resources or file drop. Well, I mean, to Adam's point of unpublished sites, that's a problem because the way that unpublished sites work or hidden content works is it treats that content as hidden and thus only visible to users with the content.hidden permission. Um, we've run into a couple of problems with this recently with attachments where an instructor uh, removed from a TA the ability to view hidden content. They tried to upload an attachment to an assignment and it failed uh, silently with a broken attachment that students couldn't view. Um, so I, I think this would be very complicated, especially for the unpublished sites. And in some cases, instructors don't want students to access those old submissions. If it's a content upload to tests and quizzes for a uh, um, a file upload question, the instructor might not want them to have access to that anymore. Why is it this instructor's um, the choice? You know, they reuse questions, they reuse exams. But they're not they reusing don't... the submission. No, but uh, they still may not want students have to have ready access to that content. 
Uh, but students but still might have ready access wrong. anyway if they actually kept yeah, the file. Yeah, they saved it, yeah. That's true. I'm thinking there's got there's probably a way to bypass um, all the tool specific restrictions and just you know have a tool you click it you get access to your content no matter where it is what site is published or unpublished it's yours you uploaded it it is yours yeah I mean if you're not navigating into the courses or into the right. tools you should be able to run some sort of query to pull exactly. up all your data. That's I, right. do, I do like Tiffany's idea about exposing this in the home site because this is something yeah. on the user as opposed yeah. to on the yeah. course or on the tool. That's right. I agree with that for sure. I and mean, I, maybe, yeah. maybe it would be something that could go into the, the worksite setup area or my resources as, you know, if we're only doing, we're only talking about content uh, attachments, right? My resources would probably be a good place to put that button. Um, download all my, know, my attachments. Be, from it could time. be its own tool and it probably needs to be its own tool. So we don't have to refactor resources. If, it's, if it were its own tool, it could also potentially be extensible where there would be a link to download content and then later on you could subsequently add a link to download lessons or forums if that were a future development goal. Mm -hmm. so, so what do I write? Yeah, Laura, that's what I was just wondering because we're, we're getting close to our time. Um, we, so how about now just as an FYI, the Canvas version of this just grabs assignment submissions. Oh, yeah. yeah, we had this come up first for a question. The Canvas does not really provide much in this way of functionality either. Okay. So we're proposing a tool in a user's home site that they can use to traverse content for anything they've uploaded to any site through a tool situated in a student's home site and and i think it should whatever this tool is should have a per tool basis button um like download all my assignments download all my well, no, Tiffany, like actually, no, it shouldn't over. have that. The reason you're suggesting that is because of your intimate knowledge with what occurs under the cover. Mm -hmm. But most people don't care if it's easy or hard to do under the covers. They want right. one button. That's so right. we are not going to make this easier for developers by trying to be them. They already know how hard it is. We're going to ask for what people want. A query of any um, file uploaded by a, an individual. Yeah, in that is a, it's not a hard query, I don't think. Well, that, no, that's but I a really question of what people want because do they want a zip file that has a hundred files in it, or do they want some organized index that can point to what you know, tell them what they uploaded, or you know, it gets, I think it gets really complicated. Well, that's an interesting idea. So maybe it presents a list of everything and then they select what they want. On the first LMS I wrote, we had an export feature and it actually, it actually dumped like an HTML page and it had like your assignment section and your grades and all these sections and everything that was attached. It had a nice little index and, and it, I don't, I don't know how many people used it, but you know, I, I've seen this yeah. before, but I haven't seen this recently as an option. And, yeah. Kind and, uh, of like maybe it's sorry, like, sorry. Mm -hmm. I th the implementation will be difficult because not everything is tagged as being created by the person either. Like assignments are right. are, are true. You know, I, I can say test and quizzes. You know who who it was, but for other tools, it doesn't say like it doesn't have a creator on like a forum post sometimes, or it's maybe some other tools that they may or may not have. And then you get into like sticky issues like group group assignments, like who is going to get what group assignment back and. Oh, I think okay. there's a lot of edge cases. 
But yeah, there are a lot of edge cases, but you mm -hmm. know, I don't think the edge cases mean that we shouldn't address the primary request or the primary um, in the best way that we can. I, it, it, exactly, because students, yeah. I think, would really appreciate this feature. Yeah, I I think <clears throat> that you know, there's still some concern for instructors who want content unpublished after it's done. And I think as an instructor, I'd be concerned if I told my test never to release feedback, my student could still get any content they uploaded in that test somehow, that would bother me. Um, you know, because you do have to release feedback for students to re-access an attachment that they uploaded to an exam. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to download tests and quizzes, though. I think people are more concerned with downloading artifacts that they've authored. So yes. files, projects, things that they've composed and then turned in for, for a test. I mean, you're answering questions, but it's not the same as writing an That's essay. And even if it was an essay response, I doubt any student is going to want to download that. Um, yeah. Maybe we could just skip tests and quizzes. I mean, if you put the, limits around it and say it's only going to download your assignment yeah. submissions, and that's it, and yeah, it, that's all that it downloads, that. but it downloads them across courses, I think people would still like that, mm -hmm. even if, if it's limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And we do have Ooh. an assignments yeah, bulk fine. download code that might be able to be leveraged for it. Sorry, folks, we are out of time. Um, I, I hate to cut us off and I'm not sure. Um, Laura, do you think you've you've got enough to put a comment in there for us? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot. So I'm sorry to cut us off, folks. Um, we don't have a, another meeting this month because Open Aperio will be occurring the week that we would normally have a meeting. So um, we'll catch up in July, July 1st. Um, so look forward to maybe continuing through this list or if we have a presenter, we will welcome them and <coughs> see you then. And also hopefully see you at Open Aperio. Thanks Yay. everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Tricia. Thank you. Bye, Charles. Bye-bye. Have a good Bye. week, everyone. Bye. Thank